All right, sit back, relax. It's time for another Laneway Talks. G'day, Rob. Welcome to another episode of Laneway Talks. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Vin. Thanks for having me again. It's my pleasure. The audience should yeah. kick in now. Yeah. Mate, they love you. I do, thank you. And you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a lot happening. Still, you know, it's been Christmas, but still a lot happening in music. And by the 8th or 9th, you know, things are back in full swing in the music business. That's good. So it I, is. I thought, yeah, exactly. I mean, in the old days, you just wouldn't do that. It, 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 you'd wait till late January, but, you know, there is no stopping now. Quite frankly, some people are releasing on the 1st and 2nd and 3rd of the new year. Look, I thought what we could start with today too, I just wanted to, you know, pick up on what's news out there and whatever and um, what's new. Well, what I've been picking up is Electric Pandas are going to do a tour in 224. Do you ma- do you remember Electric Pandas? I do, yes. I Actually, we played with them, not the soldiers, the band I was in for the soldiers from Adelaide, the Moe. We played with the Electric Pandas, I think, at, was it Salinas or Coogee Bay or something? And were they, because um, I, I never got to see them live because we, we look after them at Laneway and um, Lynn Buckfield was a sensational singer and there was a couple of EPs she did after Electric Pandas, which are really good too. But um, okay. yep. what, what were they like live? Um, I thought they were pretty good. Um, I mean, quite quite poppy, weren't they? There's the pop band, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the crowd loved them. They had a couple of popular Oh, yeah, they had a couple of hits. Um, so they had the hits. Well, that's right. Yeah. And they could, yeah, they delivered live. So that was good. The next thing happening or has happened is the Mark of Cain of their national tour. Now, you but should they, be a real, a real fan. They concluded, aren't they playing tonight in Perth? A couple more, I think, because I'm just it? having a look. Because uh, tonight's Fremantle, the 13th of Jan, Friday, the 19th of Jan, they're in Melbourne, and Saturday, the 20th of January over. Right. Well, there you go. And that then that's it, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. That's remote, yeah. I mean, and I, my understanding has been so successful for them and knowing that the guys, because, again, we look after um, – some of their product and yep. they're lovely yep. guys and of course they're from Adelaide and they live and breathe Adelaide, correct? Yeah, yeah. And Eli Green is playing drums for them now and he's a phenomenal drummer, local guy here. Oh um, yeah, because they used to have the American guy, didn't they? They did, John, because I, I, I had a little bit to do with the drummers from Marcus Kane over the years, but yeah, I think it was John Stainer. Yeah, sensational band though. Well, the, um, well I mean, of yeah, course... We knew the, the whole relationship um, with Henry Rollings and um, and isn't that where the drummer came from or that's how it all started? Okay. You know, that's because it was 84, wasn't it? Yeah. When they, well, that's how they kind of got the American drummer. He'd um, championed them overseas and yep. then this drummer was from some other big band over there and it was going to be the next big thing. Of course, it didn't happen, but um, Mark Kane was still fantastic. I mean, what a... What a band. Uh, anyway. They're great, solid, hard-rocking band. Uh, brutal, actually. But yeah, well, the, uh, the other one happening, Dave Warner has been doing a few shows and has vowed to do more in 24, and he has his new book out, Big Bad Blood. Uh, yep. And I, and I, I didn't realise. I, I never knew much about Dave Warner. I did like his his material because we had it at Mushroom. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we we had a video that I found that we put out of um, Dave Warner live at La Trobe Uni. Anyway, you know, I I then just had a bit of a look into his background, and I didn't realise he'd written um, film scripts and he'd written quite several, quite a lot of books, crime thrillers, and yeah. and then yeah. we. Had a little bit of a banter across Facebook and, and whatever and, and uh, emails with him. He, he's not on lame way, but we would love him to be, but he looks after everything himself. And he's still quite prolific, really, in everything he does uh, anyway. And it was the, the guitarist who passed away, who if you look at the video on our YouTube channel, he's just sensational live, the guitarist. I forgot what his name was, but okay. he was just fantastic. Anyway, the other one is... D minor and the discords are back at it again and they've done yes. a few shows over Christmas and John the singer is going to do some solo material he's approached me and yes yep. we said yes we will put that out and he's coming back to me with that late January or into late February around that time sure. so um, we will uh, be seeing more from well I suppose 
part of the D minor, but D minor on the Discords, even though it was one album, Rob, it was a fantastic record and visually they were just so good live. And um, I, I just, I think it's a travesty they didn't do more work, you know, put more albums out anyway. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Uh, Southbound Snake Charmers have a, a new release on the way, probably in about three weeks' time. We'll yep. be previewing it, I would hope, in the next two weeks, and we're really looking forward to that. This Southbound Snake Charmers, on their last video, didn't quite crack 100,000 views. They got 98,500. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that last week. Yeah, and we're just, um, we're just promoting a live show. I went to one of their live shows a week or two ago and uh, filmed it on Facebook and yep. we're just promoting that at the moment and that's starting to go a bit spastic too. And, cool. Yeah, uh, I had not listened to them today. Yeah, playlist. so that's, uh, that's doing well. Also, last Tuesday or Tuesday of this week, we previewed, um, who was it? We previewed Eduardo Miller live here at Laneway Music on our um rooftop uh, with the MCG behind us and that is going ballistic too. I think it's just about to crack 40,000 views on Facebook. Wow. So that's really good. Eduardo Miller being Billy Miller's son from the Ferrets. Is Billy. that right? Yeah, and Billy Miller and the great blokes and the Spaniards and that's who Eduardo is. Very talented young guy. It, it kind of comes through too when he plays light. He's a professional because he's been with his dad, you know, played with his dad yeah, so many Billy times. Billy Miller used to frequent a gig that we did at um, the Linden Tree Tavern on the uh, corner of Des Wanard and um, in St Kilda there. Oh, yeah, and um, yeah. we used to start at one and finish at five, so it was a very late night gig. But yeah, Billy Miller used to rock up and get up and do a few songs. Yeah, no, uh, that so was that fun. was a really that was a really good show. We are considering doing another one, so we'll think about that next week. And a week ago was the anniversary of the release of the Frampton Comes Alive. Classic record, you know, it blew me away. I can remember it really clearly when it came out because yes. we, me and my brothers loved it so much and we put it onto cassette and when we used to come back from our beach house with our parents um, on a Sunday, a hot Sunday night and I don't know, you know, the weather was a lot hotter back then. They tell me it's going to get hotter now but I'm it telling you that way, it, it was yeah. hotter back then and we we did have a cassette player in the car. It was an old Valiant and yep. and we used to listen to, um, uh, what was that, uh, what was the last song, the really long one? Do, um, uh, Do you. Feel like we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd play, and man, it blew us all away. We'd just listen to it all in the car while we're driving home. Fantastic. So a lot of memories are from Peter Frampton and that that album. It was just yeah, yeah. a I'm classic record. Um, I'm you know, actually looking at it as we speak. Yeah. Well, I um I I got the. I remember when they, they did the remastered Anniversary Edition CD and I asked the finance director at Ant Universal, uh, could I get a copy? So, of course, promptly he sent one over. And, you know, again, it had been remastered and whatever and just fantastic. Okay. So I don't even know if I've still got that. Um I usually try and keep those special ones. The vinyl? No, this was a remastered CD. They weren't doing any vinyls, mate. That cost too much money. Yeah, right. This was um, just the, uh, uh, whatever it was, 30th anniversary or 25th anniversary, whatever. Um, Okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on to have a bit of a discussion about one of the bands we discussed last week, and that is Detective. So, Detective were formed yeah. in 76. Uh, mm -hmm. They signed to Swan Song and released their debut album 77. Band members, Bobby Pickett, Michael Desbars, Michael yeah. Monarch, John Hyde and Tony Kaye. Now, yeah. they did do the second album and I did read some reviews and discussions with the band and there was a, a lot of talk around the usual talk that I, I've always encountered throughout my career when bands don't make it and they go, there was a lack of support from management and the record company. And that was what they said. And I, I, I find that a complete cop-out, Rob, when bands okay. bands say that. It's like you, you have to make it happen yourself and don't indulge in, well, it's my management have to make it happen, I'll just make the music. You know, that's just not enough. It just doesn't crack it for me. I mean, what's your opinion on that? Um, I mean, I had a similar 
experience. So, um, yeah, you can just drive and smash your head against the wall for only long enough sometimes until your head starts to split it open, so you move on. Um, so without actually being there and going through, you have to have a little bit of scepticism, I suppose. And, yeah, where, where's your source on the information of what happened with the band? Because I remember that album when it came out, I got a fantastic tape clip on skin, played it in the car as you do, and crashed it the first album and disappeared, and I could never find them again. It was very difficult to... Mm. That's sad because I think they were they were Zeppelin there, um, but I suppose that was a good model to have, and they're on the same label. So well, they yeah, yeah they did they did comment that the label was an indulgence label by Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin were all over the place by that stage and they had no kind of interest. And, you know, then it's back to uh, management let them down and obviously the label let them down. It's, yeah. you know, I've heard it all before. Um, if you don't make it, you don't make it. And uh, you just... Yeah, but it's a, it's a very narrow window, isn't it, to try and swap to, oh, well, to start to line up a lot. But that's the same. But that's the same now, isn't it? The narrow window. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't changed. I don't think it'll ever change. It's just you know, yeah. a matter of getting through. It. There's yeah. so many. I'm just looking at that first album. There's so many great songs on it. Had another listen to it. I listened to it a couple of times. The full album over the past week. And Detective Man, the great song. Yeah. One more heartache. I, I didn't think the second album was as good. Did you? No, it's not actually. Mm. I'll, I'll I'm agree with you on that. Um, it's a little bit sad. I didn't realise I had a second album out. Yeah. It was terrible but cover. Yeah. I always remember it. Terrible yeah, it cover. Yeah, you know that's So you know that's that's the well the detective. I mean, I didn't. I don't know that I saw them as a Led Zeppelin esque band. To me, they were. I said Led Zeppelin esque. Yeah, you know, with the vocals and the heavy yeah. guitars and. I thought they had a real sound. Of, I thought they had the sound of their own, Rob. Yeah, yeah, they're a bit more keyboardy. Yes, a bit more yeah, contemporary, I suppose in a way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't think I, I, when I heard it back in the day when it came out, I liked it, but I never thought they were going to be big. Uh, I didn't think it was good enough. I didn't think there was any hits in it whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, but, I I like grabbing hold of bands like that that people don't really like and mm. having it your own. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we all do. You, you know, you have your little band that nobody's heard of and you yeah, you go, yeah. this has just got some crackers on there. But I thought they were good That's songs right. but not crackers. Anyway, um, we move on then to Hackensack, which I know you couldn't get a uh, – you couldn't have a listen because it's not available. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know – um, I did a bit of research because it was one of my favourites and, I've, you know, I've got it on vinyl and that's all that's... Uh, well, no, it did come out on CD. I did read there in England. Um, I always yep. thought Hackensack were an American band. It is a real southern blues rock album. It always... And I never looked into it too much. I can't believe this that I always just thought they're American. You've only got to read where they record it. But it was in England. But then, you know, they could be from America recording in England. Anyway, on reading, they were English. Yes. Yeah. The singer was Haystack Calhoun, Hackensack. Uh he was huge. And one of the jokes one of the jokes well, one of the jokes online was that the band used to say you had to top, I don't know, you know, whatever it was, a hundred kilos to join the band or something like that. The other band Oh, uh, so like a Backman turner overweight. Yeah, it would, but the other guys weren't big. It was only the singer. Anyway, he, that's now that's Nicky Moore. Now yeah. you, you have been able to listen to Nicky Moore, right? Yeah. And and the first track on your yeah on that uh, Dirty Blues playlist. And and if everybody's yeah. listening, it's on Spotify. Deep South with a twist of blues. That's uh, it. Yeah, with a twist of blues. That's what it's called. And what we're trying to do with that, and just quickly before we get back to Hack and Sack, yep. is it's – I'm trying to pinpoint – Firstly, bands that are not big and commercial and that have more rock than blues in there but have a real twist of blues and it's, you know, kind yep. of an alternative edge to it. Um, so that's what I'm trying. So it does push it towards more rock and I mean more rock and a little bit of blues but some of it's got more blues in it. Anyway, I'm, I'm yep. trialling it. I think there's 11 listeners, but you only started two weeks ago or whatever. And I'm just going to promote it each week on our Facebook page and just try and keep building it. It may take us a year to get to 1,000 or 10,000. Yeah, right. Uh, but we, I'm going to keep, you know, uh, churning over tracks in there. And that's half the battle too, is that you've got to turn those tracks around and you've got to find new tracks. But they're definitely out there, you know. It, it 
definitely, if someone's got a, a million streams, I really can't put them on there because they're just too popular. Anyway, um, that you you okay. did you did listen to Nikki Moore on there, who's the lead singer for Hack and Sack, uh, and then. If we look a bit more into Nicky Moore, he was a heavy metal singer and here he is doing this blues. It's interesting because I'm just looking at him here on the Discogs website. Yeah. He played in a big Jim Sullivan band. Big Jim Sullivan um, was one of Blackmore's influence. Oh, really? So, uh, from, oh, I can't remember his name, the rep from Yamaha. He was one of Hendrix's influences as well. Right. Like, right. Founder of all of that, big Jim Sullivan, I'm sure that. Story came out like that. Well, there's a lot yeah. of albums this Nicky Moore has played on. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you go through the, it, it Samson was Bruce Dickinson's first band. Yeah, or he sang. It was, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Samson, so then he took over from Bruce Dickinson when he joined Iron Maiden. Yeah. He then formed Mammoth, and we all know Mammoth, don't we? We do. Yeah. yeah. So then he is Mammoth, and then there was a string of other bands, and then uh, he's come out. 30 years later with, um, I think, the Nicky Moore Blues Explosion or whatever it's called, and he, he, he did that, and there's definitely another two or three different bands in between there, and always with quite well-known musicians. And, yeah. Uh, but then you got this guy that's a real kind of blues... Uh, in you know, in his heart, there's this real blues thing happening, but he's a heavy metal singer. So I found that really interesting, gave the guy real depth, never had any real success. I didn't think Samson and Mammoth really became big, big, did they, Rob? Um, I mean, the underground guys knew who they were. I think. Well, um, I agree with that. I always used to see their albums at the import stores, uh, the vinyl. Yeah. But yeah. they never cracked it as a as a big band like Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. Yeah, I, it's hard to know because we weren't in England or the UK to sort of discover how big they really were. But mm. I mean, speaking of, like with Iron Maiden, Paul Diano's on tour in Australia at the moment. So. Oh, is he? The original does he, singer. Does he, pull many, does he pull much of a crowd? I don't know. I was thinking of going to the gig on Wednesday night, actually. I think it's Wednesday night this week, here at the go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do remember him when he was here last. Might have been five years ago, seven years ago. All right. Uh, Did he get a few people there? Or? Uh, no, he was never that big. No, he was never. You know, he might do. He's just doing the pub circuit, you know. So Yeah, I mean. It's not I mean, huge. So, you know, if we. The, uh, with a hack and sack, I mean, then I'd look at the other band members and Paul Martinez was on bass. And so I did a bit of research on him and yeah. he, he'd played in an enormous amount of bands. I mean, uh, just he had played with everybody. Ray Smith, well, he was from Mott the Hoople, I think. Ray, Ray Smith on guitar. Okay. And so yeah, there was... was Quite a quite a, uh, an array of guys in Hackensack, and they yeah. and I couldn't find. I, I did see in Discogs that there was a live album they put out, but I can't find it anywhere. It's not online, that's for sure. So they've kept everything yeah. offline, and you can see that N- Nicky Moore only has the one album up, I think, and S- the Samson and Mammoth albums are up, but they're quite lame in comparison when you say metal. And you listen to yeah. them now, and they're quite lame. <laughs> Yeah. Aren't they? Uh, so, so that was the hack and sack thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going oh. to transfer it for you and um, from vinyl and get you to listen to it in a couple of weeks. Okay? Yeah, looking forward to that. It'll be great. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good record. Uh, now, you know, then I wanted to go on to I think Judas Priest, didn't I? I Nikki, I talked about Nikki Moore a bit. That you know, yadi yadi yadi. Well, we, we sort of looked at that last week in the first two albums, and you can't get them online. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. No, I said you. Could could, but you can't. No, you can't. I'd so we need to confirm a mistake I made is that Rock and Roller and Sad Wings of Destiny are not available online as a band don't own the rights. Uh, yeah, not on any of the notable platforms. No, that's right. They were released under the Gull label and I have a few albums from Gull, the label. Um, okay. Now, Isotope uh, are one of the bands I have who were on Gull and Isotope are a uh, absolute favourite of mine jazz rock band and they, they mix in there with Phil Collins and X when he was in X. Uh, another jazz rock band. To me, they come up as one of the best in the world and Isotope is just sensational. So I knew about the Gull label and there was a Kran were on there and Kran, a German, I think, and um, a few of these other uh, guys that were on there. It was a... It, I did read online that it is a... Whoever owns it is weird and they don't release a lot of their stuff online. It's all that kind of mumbo-jumbo. So, therefore, there you go. Um, 
what they you can call- get the album on YouTube actually. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Someone's put it up, obviously <laughs> illegally, and they can know. they can get that taken down. But you know, obviously they don't want. I don't know how they do that. How do they get away? Well, well, because if nobody puts a an objection in, it'll just sit there. And that's that. <laughs> right? Full albums, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and, you know, a lot of that too. But what happens is if you're active like we are on, on YouTube, if we find we're happy for people to put our albums up on their channels because we will, uh, it will capture that it's our material and we will get paid for the plays. Yes. So yes. we don't care. And But when you've got something like this when there's a rights dispute and it's not available anywhere else, it's dubious whether it should be up there uh, because, well, who's getting the income? Because the original label is not doing anything because they haven't got it up on the other DSPs. So very strange, but that's how you do it. You just put it up and if nobody objects, you're fine. If they do object, well, yeah, it's down. Um, yeah, it's got 233,000 views. Uh, there you go. It's, you know, it needs a million to make some money, but, uh, but you yeah. know, it's still up there and is it the quality and all that? I would have thought that the band would have re-recorded the albums like Taylor Swift, that they they could have re-recorded the records and then put them out again. And you, okay. you, yeah. you, you, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the original recordings which are obviously in dispute. So anyway, so that's just correcting a mistake from back then, uh, from last week. Now, um, I've heard a few new tracks from you. So yeah. Tell us a bit about what's going on. Um, I've just been speaking to the guys and uh, looking around a bit of collaboration, as we suggested a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, there's a few things happening. So, yeah, Gib's been writing as in... Stephen Williamson from the Soldiers has been writing with a writer from Queensland and I've recorded some drum tracks to that. Yep. And so they're in demo form at the moment. So yep. I've just played them to keyboard player and guitar player Ronnie, who plays with the Soldiers, is having a look at recording a guitar track for it because we're looking at probably doing a four piece thing because our rhythm guitar player's got a few issues with his health. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's two or three tracks there. I sent him another track. I think yesterday I was. CC doing that too. Yep. There's another demo track from a couple of writers from the UK that um, keeps chopping it up and putting some lyrics to. So yeah, there's there's a bit happening. Fantastic, um, mate. It's a uh, and I'd, it's about time. Yeah, I mean it's all been there. It's just having the time to actually get it out to you, which has been difficult because I've been very time poor. You know, with uni and study and work, playing and all that stuff that you do. But um, but yeah, it, it, as I said, it's underway. It's just a matter of time that it takes to get it out. And so hopefully we'll get something from you in the next. Two months, yeah? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, because what we're putting out are old tracks that have been uh, remixed or remastered, would I say that? Yeah, I've got the original stems, so I've doubled up drum track and fixed a few bits and pieces and, you yeah. know, give some, some vocal work. So there's still, I think there's still good songs or great mm. songs. It's so mm. just a matter of getting it out there so that we just can hear what we're doing. And, you know, it's a, a time that I think we were really at the top of our game, which is um, 91, that's where those tracks came from. So, mm. yeah, and nobody's ever heard them other than live because we used to play them live. But, mm. Um, Mm. Well, I, well, my thing is, mate, you're still a good drummer, so you need to utilise that while you can and uh, yeah, you know, record as much as you still can. Still working on it. <laughs> so well, we've got, what have I got coming out? There's a new Radio KSG track, which I got the other day, uh, which we're just waiting on a cover art for, so that's coming out. We've just completed another Deep South song, which um, has Kent Steedman, Anna Carell okay. from Spain in it, and she's over there. Yep. And, and then Craig Bloxham from Spy vs. Spy on bass and just needs a few tweaks, but we all kind of agreed it was pretty good the other day. So, and I think it's probably the best song we've done with that band to date. And then we have a new band, which I mentioned called Bullet Tramp. Right, Bullet Tramp. It's the first song anyway, and that's with si- I mentioned with Simon Chainsaw from Vanilla yep. Chainsaws. Yeah, and that did, yeah. is scheduled for a release next week. I'm sure of it, next Friday. So uh, be excited that with that one because we've got to finish off a video too this week. Um, so Good. a few projects happening there with um, – you know, with more more material coming because we've already recorded other stuff, so it's all just in the in the pipeworks. So plenty happening there. Now, what else is happening on your side, Rob? Um, I mean, I've been looking at um, as far as the anniversary of Neil per- um, passing this week, too, which is four years since he's gone. So it's four, ye- four years. Yeah, it was twenty twenty. 
Gee, oh God, I thought it was like yesterday. Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. And, and Teddy Lee's got a new book out, which is called My F and Life. And um, I've been reading that. I got that as a Christmas present. And that's being promoted by those four meetings at the moment. Um, has Neil's got a new album coming out? Has who, sorry? The guitarist from... from Alex Lyson. Yeah, Alex. Um, not that I know of. I mean, he's been on the promo book tour with Getty. But I thought he's got, yeah. a, he's got a new band together, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it's possible because he's got a band with his son, as far as I know, and, um, and I, they dig around. But, um, and you yeah, it's the, interesting because yeah. Strombo, do you know the interviewer Strombo? He was, no. He no. has done some interviews. He's pretty popular with a lot of the bigger acts and... Um, he does really in-depth interviews, lovely to see, but he was saying to Getty about how a couple of weeks after Neil passed, Getty's getting all these messages about <laughs> if he wants a drummer, it's completely inappropriate um, and kind of shocking, shocking really, when you think of it, hang, hang on, there's a bit of grieving time here and who's going to want to <laughs> fill that drum chair anyway? Well, yeah. And I know, I know they both want to get out and keep playing, but I'm not sure what project. Could you have. imagine, yeah, who could who could actually do it? I mean... Well, I, I don't think anyone can. Because no, I don't the, either. The nature of Neil, his writing, his lyrics, you know, it was a third of the band. Oh, you, like, would, you would have to change the name of the band and it's a whole new band. You would, yeah. You'd, it'd have to be another thing. Because even getting solo, uh, my favourite headache, that's very different from what Rush is, so... Um, and I know I've heard Alex's solo stuff too. It's, you know, it's a different laneway to what. Mm. There you go. <laughs> to would, what? Um, did, well, did you see the Black Crows have got a new album out, Chris and um, and what's his name? Yeah, well, they're great. I mean, they've, you got me to listen to um, Dirty Honey. Yeah. And Goodbye June. Mm. You know, I really think there's a lot of Black Crows elements. Yeah, in definitely. Those two yeah. Bands. I thought that with Dirty Honey, if you went to the earlier stuff, it was really ACD-ish. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, what, what a what a young band. I mean, uh, they're on yeah. fire. I mean, they've, they've got Angus and Malcolm's guitar, to, guitar tone. Like, I was actually quite surprised at how close they've got to them. Yeah, wow. yeah. Goodbye June, a different feel altogether, a bit more, I think, a little bit of keyboards in there or whatever. Yeah. A, a bit more polished than Dirty Honey. That's the way I see it. But just two sensational young acts. You know, yeah, they were both good. So thanks for the tip on those. Yeah, that. it is. Yeah. It, look at um, uh, the temperance movement. They've gone. I think. I think they've split up now. Uh, but they okay. were they were another great band. Um, yep. And I got to see them in London myself, and they they were really good. Uh, but you know, it's trying to discover these, and that's what I was getting at with the with the um, the. Pod, uh, with the playlist, it's trying to get to all these artists and go, well, how, you know, it's the research involved. It does take me hours because I'm also with the playlist trying to make sure I'm picking out, if they've got three albums, the best track out of those. And for me, the best track is the most commercially accessible track, right? That may yeah. not be what you see as the best track, but for me, it's the most commercially accessible. So one that's got all the ingredients to make it a hit, you know, the the chorus and uh, the riff in it or whatever. And it is, it, you know, you, you got to go, you just got to keep listening and listening to all their songs and go, right, that's the one. But that's the one for me that I think has got it. But again, finding all these acts, I just go, wow, they're just, um, there's a plethora of them, you know, and I'm mixing in some of our acts in there, some of our blue stuff, um, which is some alternative blues. But, you know, you know, I, I, there's a few there like Larkin Poe, just absolutely fantastic. Um, Black River Delta, I thought were great. Um, uh, Jack's uh, Hello, wow, just fantastic. Uh, you see I put a Datura 4 in there, which is, um, uh, yep. what's his name from the stems? I had I had to put that in there. You know, oh, just look, the Karma effect, I thought that was unbelievable. Bourbon House, um, Troy Redfern. I mean, there's just so many that, you know, and it kind of really brings home to you how many are out there struggling around the world because they've only got a couple of thousand streams, you know. It is. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's bloody hard trying to, to get some traction. I'll tell you something that's come up with us in the last a couple of weeks is that when we do when we do ads and we put a learn button on the ad and it 
the Loom button goes to a smart card and the smart card gives you the different digital platforms like Spotify and Apple to click on and listen to the song. And what we okay. want, we, you know, we'll spend the money and we want people to click on there and see if it gets a bit of momentum and maybe it can viral, okay? That's what's all we're trying to do. And when we do that, we get very, very poor responses. We've never been happy with it because um, Spotify is supposed to be live. Well, it's not live because I've told you this before, Rob, where if I release your record on the Friday, there's no results in the dashboard for at least three days. Well, if it's live, how come if it got a 1,000 streams in the first day why isn't that there the very next day so it's not it's not live not in any shape or form and to me it means it's being vetted so we we're not happy with that process and that that marketing we starting you know to think that it's a complete waste of money and then there's the what we've just started doing uh is on meta with Meta are really pushing for videos. They want to become, they want to grab some of YouTube's success because YouTube are, are so much more popular than than Facebook. There is no doubt about okay. it. They're, so they're now introducing, you can put full videos on there. So we're doing some campaigns there, but especially with some of the live shows I've gone to record on my phone, because that's what I do. I just rock up to one of our gigs. I put my phone up and I hold it there for half an hour and I record it live. You know, there, there's no magic to it, Rob. It's just on your iPhone and yep. um, and record it and bang. And we've been promoting those. Now we're promoting those in Facebook, Meta. We're then putting a learn button on there, which is takes you to the video of that band, say their latest video. So there was one there, Southbound Snake Charmers and, uh, and even Eduardo Miller. So I've gone to their videos. I can see, so um, say let's say Eduardo. Eduardo hasn't have any, had an, an album out for about two years, so he's got a new album coming out. But his video was quite old, so, it, you know, it had come to a complete grind. It might be getting one stream a week. So, yeah. so then we do the campaign and I put that learn button on there and straight away, the very next day, I can see those streams coming through, right? I can see it's real. As yeah. people are clicking on my ad, they then get the learn button, they click on that, takes them straight to YouTube and it registers and suddenly someone that hasn't been getting any streams is getting quite a lot of streams. I think he's up to nearly 40, I think 40,000 views right, and there's, you know, a lot of streams coming through. So what it, it, we, we had a discussion here about it the other day and how disappointed we are in Spotify and is it real, Rob? That's the question. Is it real? Do you know what I mean by that, Rob? Well, how can you find out? Really? Well, you can't. Is it real? Are those streams real? How come oh, yeah, well. I can track my I can track my clicks by putting a pixel in my ad? So it might say it got um, fifteen hundred clicks onto the smart card, which then you would think people would click onto the song, uh, but I look at the song and it's had no streams on Spotify. So, uh, I mean, can we... So what are people looking at? Well, what can, can we trust what they're doing there? Because, we, you know, we all know that Spotify is a clandestine organisation in the sense of how it operates in the back room. Nobody knows. And so... Is it real? Are they fabricating figures? Are they excluding figures, Rob, that um, that go in there and they go, oh, well, they don't get enough anyway, so bugger that, we're not going to let those through. Uh, do they do that? Well, I mean, I don't know whether you've ever seen it. It was a while ago I saw a video. I don't know what the source was. I can't remember at the moment. But it was a room, and I think it was in China. It was a room full of iPhones, like we're talking thousands of iPhones, and they're just playing songs. Each phone has a different run of songs, and there's thousands of rows of these phones, which oh, are I essentially... I that. Yeah, I haven't seen that. ...essentially play. So they play to this, but they just keep running. So if you think of that, you go, well, that's not real. It's like the record reps used to go into the yeah. record shop and they the whole payola thing, you know. They yeah, go, oh, we've got no, I can... new here. I can tell you some crazy tricks with with in the days of yeah, no, CD you know, and, vi and vinyl. Yeah, I know yeah. a lot of those tricks. Yeah. I saw the reps doing it, and I saw the figures come back, and I was in you know in processing and sales, so I, I saw how it was manipulated. Mm. And fair enough, and a lot of that. Those figures went to magazines, and then those magazines manipulated those figures. And you know, how do you believe that's from the seventies? How do you believe that top forty is real? Yeah. You know, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm flabbergasted. Well, this, I think we've proven that you can't trust yeah, I, what I, you I, see. As you said, it's more clandestine now. It's, it's even deeper down that rabbit hole. It's like, how can you trust it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was I was just blown away. I thought I'd, yeah. I've just given up with Spotify. It it is so difficult to get streams on there, and I, <laughs> I look at them and I, I think, come on, what's going on? And then I look at YouTube and what we're doing there, and it's real and it's live and it's happening, and I can I you know I can see it happening straight away. And it yeah, yeah, yeah. it tells me is it the beginning of the end for companies like Spotify? And I have, well, what happens with Apple? Music. Do you get any data back from them? Yeah, yeah, we get Apple. Apple, yeah, we get Apple. Um, they're just so insignificant. You, you know, they only um, they they represent just under ten percent of the market here. Is that wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it's a company that, you know, let's go back fifteen years ago, were seventy percent of the market as Spotify are here at the moment. They're like 60, 70 percent. Okay. And they let themselves go down because they used to say that there was no money in music for them. So I don't, I don't know how that happens <laughs> when you're getting all that yeah, money right. coming through. There was no money I in music. You. Yeah. And that I they didn't care and they just let it slide because it wasn't where their uh, profit margins were greatest. So, uh, you so know. What, what percentage has Spotify got? Spotify here, it's like 67 percent. All right. Now, in America, it's a bit different. Um, uh, my understanding standing is Apple are probably 30%, 35%, and okay. Spotify are probably about the same. And then you have the Amazons and Titles and all those kind of things there. Is Deezer in there anyway? Yeah, Deezer are in there, yeah, yeah. But they're not, you know, they might be 5%. Um, uh, so... Th- it makes up there. But then you go to Europe and you're back to the Spotify, 60%, 70%, and Apple, yeah, you know, 10% if you're lucky. It was down to like 5 or 6% two years, three years ago, uh, and they picked their game up a little bit. But they're not a significant player anymore. So we don't look at Apple stats because we're not interested. Um, they And, you know, they don't have the artist dashboard and all that kind of stuff, Rob. So, yeah, you know, right. Spotify yeah. give you the ability to go in and do, you know, all that kind of stuff. Apple yeah, they do. Yeah. don't yeah. really have all that. It's it's yeah. all them. Um, it's like trying to put a podcast on Apple is really difficult. Whereas with our podcast, we go, uh, we put them out through Acast and Acast just pushes it out everywhere. And, and on Spotify, it just happens. Um, to get it onto Apple, that's a different story. You see, once again, there's this complete closed shop. Now, there was good parts to that in the past is that Apple were closed shop and therefore, um, you know, uh, um, black market activity and uh, criminal activity was very difficult to achieve on Apple. You know, we all knew that you felt safe with Apple. So that's a good part about it. Um, But the bad side is that uh, you know, everything was so difficult. To try and submit a song five years ago, I had to be a registered mastering, um, you know, authorised mastering person okay. from App, right? So if I, it, 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 you had to get approved by them to be a mastering expert. And so you had to do yep. that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's it just, it made everything was so difficult difficult but they say it was all in again to to thwart the black market and all that kind of stuff and also to keep the standard up and there was truth to that also they were definitely in in the heyday keeping standards up but that's that's all gone now they they don't even get you don't have to be a mastering expert or, or, or an authorized mastering person put tracks up on apple that's all gone so it's oh. it's what we call here in the office the wild wild west because that's what it is out there, the wild, wild west. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so that's why we've gone to Laneway Red, which is just about there, Rob, and we are going to release our own platform. And we're very excited about it because it will be very transparent and it will have a lot more eco-friendly or music ecosystem attachments to it. So, you know, if you want to put your gigs up on Spotify... It's not easy. If you want to put your merch up on Spotify, oh, man, that's really hard, all right? So you virtually have to have a Shopify shop uh, because they're in cahoots with Shopify, Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Whereas with us, it will all be within the one ecosystem. You can do it then and there. You want to sell some equipment. So say you've got uh, some old symbols there you want to get rid of. You can put them up. So if you've got virgin soldiers in there, you go, oh, by the way, we've got some... I've got some symbols for sale, and you put them up. Okay. All right. right. So 
why couldn't Spotify and all that do that? But what it tells me, this is my opinion, is that we get back to this corporatized world and I'll be really political in this. What's happened is the Labor Party have become the corporate players and they support the big end of town. I, I just mm-hmm. what I truly believe <laughs> the Liberal Party now are going to go out to the suburbs and they're going to try and get the working element of society to vote for them. This, this is what I. This is my opinion. And isn't that the opposite of what their ideology was in the first place? Who's Labor? Labor's was a workers workers party. That's right. But now they're big end of town. Oh, right? mate, they're big end of town. If I've ever seen it, yeah, the whole Alan Joyce, the Voice thing, you know, with the, the, the with the um, uh, food source Coles and Woolworths, who should be investigated for um, price gouging and all that kind of stuff. It's it's all about support and staying in power. Now, of course, mm. the Liberals will do it on their side. Then we have the teals, who are just the crazies to me. I mean, I don't even hear what I don't even hear what they're doing, you know. Um, and so I get back to I get back to the music and the corporatization. Why wouldn't Spotify build all those elements in there? Oh, well, because there's not enough money in it. But it would be part of the ecosystem, and it's about music. But I suppose, look, I mean, and, and they've got every right to say, no, music secondary, it's a business, whereas Laneway yeah. Red is going to be about music. The business side of it will come second. I say to you, Rob, how much money is enough money to live? And and I'm not a socialist. I'm putting that out there to everybody. <laughs> I'm not a socialist, all right? Um, I, I love making money, but, you know, how much money is enough money? And there's this whole the, the whole new world of, you know, it's about the business and Spotify and Apple, I think, um, signify that in that it's they're not interested in the music. It's the business itself. The music is just secondary, you know, that makes them the money. And yeah, um, that's that's just not good. That's not good for me. But it all comes back to, you know, as you said, the consumerism that's run by a corporate company. When you think of the original ideology of the blues music, mm. which are the roots of pretty much every music, popular music that we listen to now, it's in contrast because they never wanted that music to be popular and you're always fighting the establishment. Mm. It's just a bigger version of what's going on, you know, the suppression of certain forms of music by the bigger companies because they want to sell what they can sell. Well, you know, uh, it... <laughs> If you get the top two percent, and you know, and we know what's going on with Spotify in that, yeah. as of the first of Jan, there's this whole new revenue model, and if you don't hit a thousand streams, you don't get paid, and uh, you, you're put on the no pay list. And the top two percent of musicians were high, were weren't against it. I bet they weren't against it because it adds another half a billion dollars to the money to be distributed to the top end of let's call it the top end of music town, right? Yeah, yeah. So they, they love it. And well, it's a monopoly, really. Isn't it? Yeah, and that, so once again, that's happening within with the musicians too. It's just dog eat dog, isn't it? Yeah, it, good song. It, 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 yeah, dog eat, yeah. Well, it's status quo, isn't it? Dog eat dog. No, no, it's a ACDC song. The yeah. Soldiers did a great cover, I think. Oh, right. I know, that was Dog of Two Heads, wasn't it? Status quo. That was their, I don't know, it was about their fourth album or something. Yes, Dog of Two Heads. Before yeah. they cracked it with Hello and yeah. Hard Drive. Yeah, 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 exactly. On the level. So, you know, I, I, I see all this stuff. So we've, we've you know, we're, we're, we're going to come out. I mean, it's going to come out basically as a basic platform first. Yeah. And then we've got all these ready to release, but we're going to let them out, you know, uh, three or four months at a time and add them to... Sure to the um, product line of what's in there. But once again, it comes back to trying to get bands to have platforms that are transparent from for them and that, sh- you know, if they do get streams, they actually can see them in real time. Why could Spotify not show me streams for three days? I mean, what is that? I mean, why? Why? I mean, I don't understand it. It's it's insane. Yeah, all this kind of stuff. I, I, and, I, and then I see the, uh, I, I think I said it last week, I see the analytics and I try and assess to drill down to go, right, we're getting some traction there. Let's let's really drill down and see who we're going to target with our marketing. And it then stops at a point you can't get any more information. Okay, but I need the next level of info to really uh, pinpoint my marketing. But you can't. But they've got it, but they're not giving it to you. 
And, you know, there's a lot of examples on that. Um, oh. Maybe we should do a show on, on marketing. I mean, you know, but there's a lot of people that show you how to market on Meta and YouTube. And yeah. most, most of them are sponsored anyway. So, you know, <laughs> they tell you... Um, you know, that it's just them, but they're, they're sponsored. Uh, but, you know, maybe there's something in that to to go through a bit of it, you know, and as I say, to show the stats and then go, look, it just stops at a point and you can't go any further. So there's just all that kind of crazy shit happening where it makes it really difficult for the artist to uh, to pursue their, their craft and, and to try and get to the audience. You're just trying to get to a wider audience that you know will like your music. And and that Deep South Blues with a twist, um, did you li- did you listen to it at work today, Rob? Yeah, yeah, we played through. Was it where it, it would look? Tell me truthfully, were the tracks in there that you liked that you thought, geez, that sounds good? Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's good to, I mean, Jack, my workmate, Jack Thompson, phenomenal drummer, lovely guy. He was really pleased and well, like, we're even explaining to customers that, you know, we don't have to listen to a radio station in the shop. We're drummers and we can select what we want. We're, yeah. You know, it's into supporting our own sort of local music and playlists and things like that. So, yeah, it, it's good to be able to listen to that freely in a work environment or a music shop and go, wow, I love doing that, like supporting local acts. And well, yeah, a lot of those bands, you, if you get delve into them, don't have a lot of streams. Some did, and but some don't have many streams. And you think, yeah. they sound fantastic. And Yeah, you know, there's a lot of good music. And people say, who is this? You know, mm, like, mm. you know, there's a, a platform there and, you know, most of the people that come in are mu- musicians or, you know, going to be musicians. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you yeah. know, that that's part of the whole problem and, you know, and then you've got the bands that just want to be signed and just want the record label to do everything, you know. They're going to go on tour. I think, what do you, how you... Yeah, I don't think that's a reality, but... Yeah, <laughs> you're going to go on tour. I think this, that's an ideology that doesn't really exist. But. No, it it, do, it doesn't. No, there there is so many. Maybe we should have a show on... How am I going to start my band, Rob? And what am I going to require to try and make the band popular? And there's a there's a lot in that. You really, you know, right from starting finding your musicians who are committed with the same mindset and are available twenty four seven because that's what it requires. Yeah. And then um, what what are we going to do to get out there? Because it's social media these days. And so, you know, how and why. And, you know, as I said, I we had some – did the rooftop show here this week and someone – I think it was Paul Janowskis from Cattle Truck. He wrote, okay. these are fantastic. You should do more of these. And uh, I go, yeah, well, what about you, Paul? And uh, and you did the one with Craig, didn't you, Craig Horn? Like, oh, yeah, that was downstairs. We did that downstairs in the office. We didn't do it upstairs. We wanted uh-huh. to, but yeah. there was complications. Okay. But um, – yeah. But we want to do it on the roof. So, uh, and I'm trying to get, I'm trying to think of who we'll get next up there. But, uh, but okay. you know, why do you do it? You do it because it's a live show and live is worth gold on the Meta platform or on the YouTube platform. Yeah, yeah, you said that. Yeah. You know, and then you can boost it. So, you know, as I said, uh, if I was to go in there right now and tell you, I'll log into our Facebook and I'll tell you what what are we up to. I bet you it's over 40,000 for... Um, for Eduardo Miller. Let me just have a quick look. And that's uh, what that's like three or four days in, and that is phenomenal. I mean, we just put up a. a, a, a so, where, where are you looking at that? Uh, on Facebook. You can't see it, but I can. Uh, okay. So, I've got a lane, lane wave music yeah, so it's up to 37.9 thousand views. And what do we look for in that also? It's the shares, and there's 12 shares, and that that is good. You know, you might go 12 shares. We'll try and get 12 shares on something, right? And we want that to get to probably 30 or 40. I mean, if you're a phenomenal star, you'll have 500 shares, but 500 shares yeah. is yeah. like like top end, top end of, you know, you know Led Zeppelin. Um, and it's 22 comments. Well, when we did the show, I think there might have been seven comments. So there's nearly triple the comments and we want that. That's what it's all about. And that's what Meta looks at. It looks at those comments, the shares and, and then the views. So that one there is going ballistic and we would hope that might get towards 100,000. Then if I go to uh, the other one we did, which is Southbound Snake Charmers, we only just started that yesterday and that's already had 5,600 views, all right, seven comments and one share. So, and we of the likes, of course, we need the likes there, right, and we're looking for likes. 
Um, and so, you know, and, and there was something else there too. When we, I, I love this one, when we promoted Eduardo on Facebook, we had a, we superimposed him on a picture of the MCG. Someone said to me, that's false advertising. That looks like he's going to be doing it at the MCG because it says the MCG music sessions with Eduardo Miller. What do you think, that or not? What do I think? That you're using the background of the MCG when that's the view from your upstairs? Yeah. Why not? Go for it. Well, we're in the entertainment business, aren't we, Rob? I'm thinking so, yes. Yeah, you know, and it, it worked well Business for us. Thing, the property worth it. Yeah, uh, I couldn't believe it. Tell it. They did nothing. You know, you get you, you cop it no matter what you do. You just you just cop it. There's always the ones out there that give it to you. I put out a yeah, but that's well, you know, their last year. I put out a did I tell you I put out a um a post of Do Re Mi. Did I tell you that last week? No. Uh yeah, I think you did. You mentioned Do Re Mi last week, didn't Yeah, yeah, that's right. And someone got a bit upset because I mentioned the girls and not the guys. <laughs> I just serious? Yeah. Well, it, hey, I was watching Ricky Geravis, however you say he's you know, Gervis, um, a comedy stint. On came up on my YouTube feed yesterday, and I thought it was so funny because he said, uh, he goes, well, you know, he goes, if I say you're gay, he goes, you can sue me, you know that, because that's slander. Okay, so you're gay, Rob. You go, no, I'm not, I'm going to sue you. He goes, so <laughs> what I can do, he goes, I can go up to people that are gay and go, you're not gay. <laughs> And they go, how dare you? I'm going to take action against you. He goes, no, you can't. He goes, there's no law that says I can't say you're not gay. <laughs> I mean, if you look at if you look at that, that is just so funny. Uh, is it is it true? You know, if I say you're gay, you can sue me. If I say you're not, if I say you're not gay, you can't do anything about it. There's nothing wrong with that. I just. Just, yeah. Society gone crazy, mate. Anyway, no, no. that's it. No, no. For, that's it for today. We'll get some notes together for next week and, uh, and get the next show going. And uh, yeah, and, I just saw that um, nothing sacred is supporting Paul Diano too. So no, a shout out to nothing sacred boys. Well, who's that? Who, great, who's not great band? Well, who are they? Nothing sacred. I've never heard of them. They're one of Melbourne's greatest metal bands. Metal bands are they? And if, uh, and they're still out there digging. They've got one, they've got new oh, music out. So. so what are they, 60, 70? No, they're 80s metal. 80s right. metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've been there. They've the, been their fifties. Yes, fifties, sixties. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Up, up. Is there yeah, any new? Is, is there any new metal bands? It's all great. That's great, and I'm saying that's great. That's you know, if you tell me they're good, they're good. Yeah. But uh, is there any new young metal bands out there? Have you come across any? Hundreds. Of them. <laughs> really? Well, it would be good for you to bring some up, and so I'd love to look them up online and see what okay. they're and see what they're like. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but I find it really difficult to find. Young Young acts outside of your poppy uh, and or really indie mafia acts. Um, I'm not coming across a lot of real young ones. Uh, we've got Buzz and the Pickups, the Fuzz Rays. They're young, early 20s, you know, 20, yep. 21, 22. And that's that's it really in the young range. And um, don't have, you know, I, I find that whole area of trying to find young acts really difficult. And imagine if you could do that on Spotify and go, give me all metal acts that are in the age bracket of, the members are in the age bracket of 20 to 30. Yeah. Yeah, that would so, be great. Because it would so, tell you that it's new metal in a sense, wouldn't it? Because Yeah. So the, the thing is there's so many subgenres which make it very difficult because you've got death metal, you've got thrash metal, you know, you've got black metal, you've got speed metal, you know, uh, you've got classic metal. Mm. There's lots and lots of subgenres that it's into now. But Andy, how and do you is- find them? You you put into Spotify. I know we keep talking about Spotify, but it's it's the main player. And you put in there because I try it with this dirty blue blues with a twist. You put in there yep. um, metal, and it comes up with all the popular metal bands. You know, you know the old ones, and you don't get any kind of new stuff there. Um, yeah, I think you've got to refine your search parameters a little bit. Yeah, well, new metal. Well, I'll try that because you know, as you yeah, said, I'll, there's so many I'll, genres. I'll, I'll, Fish out a few this week. Um, well, what it therefore comes down to is knowing what those new genre names are. So yeah, I've got a sub, list. Sub-genres. Yeah, I've got a list in my research, actually. One of my references, I've got a list of all those different subgenres. Well, I'd like, I'd like those. If you could, yeah, if you could pop those over so I can start doing a bit of searching then on those. All right. Yeah, I'll print it out and send it across to you. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it for this week. That's good.
Let's talk to you next week, and uh, I'm still waiting. Let's, I've heard a couple of tracks from you, so as I always say, I round off the discussion with, when are we going to see your brand new track? March the 20th. March the 20th, all right. I'm going to note that down. Did you, right. did you hear the one that I sent you? Yes, yeah, I did, I did. I, what I said was that I liked it. I got a, you know, that first 30 seconds, I liked it, but as it got to, say, the between... 20 and 30 seconds, I go, well, hold on, I'm getting a little bit bored now there. But then the guitar cracks in, I go, oh, geez, that sounds really good. And that was really yeah. good from there on. So, yeah, it's, and you said, well, it's just a kind of demo. I thought, well, there's plenty of depth in that song to to get it out, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a good song. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Quite quite fresh for, you know, uh, and if that's a Virgin Soldiers song, um, that's quite fresh because a lot of your stuff is still dated to me back to the Virgin Soldiers, so it just sounded a lot fresher and newer and, you know. It is, well, because of, you know, it's written in the last two, couple of years. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I liked it, mate. So that uh, you, you guys, is that potentially the next one, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. It all is, right. yeah. All right, good stuff. All right, well, there you go. Everybody heard it. March of 20th, we're all, uh, we'll put the clock on now, okay? All right. I've written the date down. All right. I'd, should I? Um, there you go. There's a drum roll for you. Look what you've become. That's what's going to be. That's what's cool. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. All right. See you, Rob. See you, man. Thanks, mate. Bye. Well, there you have it. Another Laneway Talks. If you enjoyed that, just search Laneway Talks for more great conversations.